Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jeff Baird, and I am Chief of Staff at Rasmussen Foundation. Thank you for attending the 2022 Distinguished Artists Award celebration. Um, as we begin our program today, we'd like to acknowledge that from where I sit, we are on the homelands of the Denina here in Anchorage. Today's celebration has two parts. We have some prepared comments, which will be followed by an opportunity for you to engage, and I hope you do. Um, I will prompt you when it's time for that. Until then, um, I'm gonna ask you to keep your cameras uh, uh, or your audio off. And please feel free to use the chat function as you wish to, to comment. And again, there will be an opportunity for some live question and comments in the second part of the, the celebration today. Mm -hmm. So with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Rasmussen Foundation President and CEO, Diane Kaplan, for some opening comments. Diane, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jeff. Welcome to the 2022 Distinguished Artist Award Celebration. It is a glorious day here where I am, and I hope it is where you too are too, and it's a perfect day for a wonderful celebration. We appreciate you spending an hour with us today to celebrate an individual who has spent decades contributing to the arts and cultural life of our state. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce to you a few of our board members who are in attendance today. We have Kathy Rasmussen, Curtis McQueen of Wasilla, Angela Salazar of Ketchikan, and Rebecca Bryce Henderson of Fairbanks, who you'll be hearing from in a moment. We also have a number of Rasmussen Foundation staff with us today. Thank you so much for joining us. Why do we fund the arts? I've had people ask that. Why wouldn't we fund the arts? When I think back to the very beginnings of the Rasmussen family in Alaska, I think about the fact that Jenny Olson Rasmussen, who came as a young girl to Yakutat as a missionary, became a hunter and she shot ducks and she kept their feathers and made a beautiful feather quilt with it. And if you go to Skagway today, you can look in the museum and you can see Jenny Olson Rasmussen's quilt. And if you get the Alaska quilt book, you could see her quilt right on the front of it. If you were ever to come and visit the bank that the family, the Rasmussen family owned for almost a hundred years in the main headquarters, now Wells Fargo, on the first floor, you would see a museum filled with beautiful art. Much of that art just recently dispersed across Alaska. Not everyone's an athlete, not every kid is a mathematician. A lot of people find their voice and their future through the arts. And we believe having a, an arts and culture, spirit, vision, and life in Alaska is critical to being a great state and for all of our people. The Distinguished Artists Award is a moment of intentionality to focus on the arts in Alaska and the individuals who have spent their life contributing to it. Next up, board member Rebecca Bryce Henderson in Fairbanks. She's going to give us a bit more context on the Distinguished Artist Program and share with us the news that we've all been waiting for. Rebecca. Thanks, Diane. One of these days, I'm gonna make sure I go in front of you instead of after you. Greetings to all of you and thanks for joining us virtually to celebrate this exciting announcement of our 2022 Distinguished Artist Award. A bit about myself, I was born and raised in Fairbanks. I graduated from Trothieta UAF campus with a degree in social work, and I made the decision to stay and raise my family in this very community. It's an honor and I'm humbled to serve on the board of the Rasmussen Foundation. One of my most treasured experiences in this role has been the opportunity to travel extensively throughout our great state. I've been up a dirt road to Central. I've flown into an airstrip that meets the ocean in Unalaska. I also got to drop in by helicopter to Little Diamond this last spring. And the way, the, it's so great to see the way of life in each village 
town or city I visit, and it varies greatly, yet they all have one commonality, and that is the expression of their culture through art. I believe that Alaska is depicted by the unique perspective of both living and remembered artists. Through their medium, whichever or whatever this may be, they weave together tales of the past and present, leaving an indelible mark for future generations. This award holds a special place in my heart because unlike the majority of the generous application-based grants that are distributed by the Rasmussen Foundation every year, this recognition is received through a nomination process. The artist is revered and championed by their community and by their peers. We have a panel comprised of both artists and art experts that take on the task of sorting through many qualified persons to select a single recipient to join the ranks of a few venerated and beloved artists such as Doris Churchill or Ron Snugatuck. That's just to name a few. They're looking for a nominee that demonstrates creative excellence through decades, a person that has had a significant impact on arts and culture in Alaska. And this honor is not in name alone. It also comes with a $40,000 gift. So now that you know a bit more about the selection process, I'm so excited to announce our 19th Distinguished Artist. So please join me in congratulating James Barker, the talented photographer from Fairbanks. I can hear the round of applause already. So next up, we're gonna learn a little bit more about James through the eyes of filmmaker Pat Race from Juno. I'm James H. Barker, a photographer. I've been a photographer all my life. I moved to Bethel, Alaska in 1974 and actually met my to-be wife, Robin, in 1975. I walked in the door of a party and there was Jim Barker. And we started uh, kind of talking and getting to know each other. After I had moved in, Jim pulled out the box full of gardener photographs of that family with nine children. And he just went through the photographs and talked about them. And um, I, I looked at them and I, I loved the photographs of the children being children and the whole family dynamic. And I distinctly remember saying to myself, this guy's a keeper. Uh, somehow the word got out that I was a photographer in the Yukon Kuskokwim Health Corporation. They wanted to produce a booklet in doing the shooting around at a couple villages and such, I could clearly see this was a, a very interesting place and interesting people that I wanted to work with. I've always been impressed with how, particularly working in the villages, that people are kind of aware of what others' needs are, even though I'm kind of in some ways like an intruder. Uh, I'm, I'm a visitor. I was interviewing a friend and she said, you know, we are always getting ready. We're always getting ready to go fishing, to go, getting ready to go hunting. You know, it was just a constant preparation for whatever was going to come. Always getting ready. The late Mary Pete uh, wrote this about me. When he worked among us, he did seem to immerse himself, to be everywhere without getting in the way. His unobtrusive style showed in the photographs. In his work, he captured Yupix unabashedly being Yupix. It's just an extraordinary place and a people to get to know and be living near and, and to document.
you look for critical moments where there's a, an expression, a movement and such that will talk about what they're doing and I kind of look for that particular moment. And when I'd photographed the Selma March in 1965, I realized that, well, I really wanted to be more involved in documenting people. Just took one Leica and a b bunch of film, and there were thousands of people marching. I thought of myself as a participant observer in the middle of the march, photographing the people that were in the march, but not being outside of the separate from the march. I've always kind of felt that this was kind of a more intimate view. I was kind of studying the people who were walking in the march, but then also looking past them at times, seeing the faces of the observers as we were marching by. It was just kind of moving, the variety of people that were there, people that had traveled from all throughout the whole United States to get there. I've always kind of used Leicas, even used them at times down in Antarctica. The National Science Foundation allows a certain number of creative people to go down. I wasn't there to photograph glaciers, but to document the people themselves. And they said, gee, we've never had that before. <laughs> uh, they know that their time down there is going to be limited, and they're working like hell to try to get as much done in the time that they have. I mean, it's a very active place. He's really working on the composition. Here's this black line, and that's, that's the edge of the film. So that's exactly what he saw through the viewfinder. So I think there's something special about observing the people and what they're doing at the same time that he's thinking about the aesthetics of the composition. Black and white worked well for documentary. The black and white was kind of a stronger image. He is most himself when he's behind the camera, and that sound is, in some ways, who he is. God, these have never been looked at for a long, long time. Thank you so much, Pat Race, for another beautiful, beautiful video. The words that are coming to my mind are life and struggle and family and pure joy. Pure joy just, just captured so many different ways and so many different faces. Just beautiful, Pat Race. And now we have a very special speaker a special guest who has a few words for James. Please welcome fellow distinguished artist and Fairbanks resident, Kess Woodward. Kess. Thank you so much, Diane. And thank you, Pat, for yet another wonderful distinguished artist uh, video. It's you make all of us look so good. Um, I'm so happy to be here today to celebrate with Jim and Robin and with all of you, this long deserved award for one of Alaska's most original, productive, creative, and influential artists. Almost 45 years ago, I was sitting in my curatorial office at the Alaska State Museum in Juneau, and the front desk rang and said, there's a photographer from Bethel here 
to see you. He wants to show you some of his work. And she told me his name and it didn't mean anything to me. I was very busy. I was mildly annoyed that he hadn't called ahead. And then I thought, well, that's what we're here for, to meet Alaskan artists, talk to Alaskan artists, look at their work, see their work, and try to acquire and exhibit the best work that we can by Alaskan artists. So I said, send him on back. And a minute later, Jim came through the door with a handsomely boxed set of photographs under his arm. And we introduced ourselves and he opened them and I started looking through them and I was simply blown away. Even before he started telling me about them, I felt magically transported to the lower Kuskokwim, a place I'd never been, a culture I was unfamiliar with, and I felt that I'd been given a wholly unearned free pass into the heart of these families, the culture, the character, and their ways of life. Now, I would guess that almost every one of you attending this gathering today have seen many, maybe even all of the photographs that were in that box because they have been and continue to be exhibited and reproduced everywhere. But at that time, almost no one had seen them. And they were a revelation to me beyond their immediate subject. I was very young, still relatively new to Alaska and excited to be just beginning to learn about Alaska's native people and cultures. I'd already bought for the museum work by Nathan Jackson, who would decades later be a recipient of this award. And I had dug spruce roots with Selena Peratrovich, the mother and teacher of Dolores Churchill, another winner of this award, while Ree Munoz, yet another recipient of this award, stood nearby and sketched us at work. But none of those or other wonderful early experiences gave me more insight into Alaska Native cultures that were so unfamiliar to me than seeing Jim's portfolio of photographs. He told me a little bit about the people in the pictures and more about what they were doing, but the images needed no explanation. What I remember best from that first visit is his telling me that what he hoped to capture was his respect, his wonder at the strength and ingenuity of the people he had come to know in that community. He told me almost bemusedly that it was through the viewfinder of his camera that he got the strongest sense of those things and what a joy it was for him when he was able to catch an expression that conveyed who a person was and how they related to others. He told me, and I could see, that he almost never used telephoto lenses because he said when he photographed people, he wanted to be what he called present in their world. It's a testimony to the friendship and the trust of the people whom he photographed and still photographs that he was welcomed into those worlds. I knew that we had to have that portfolio of prints for the museum's collection, and it wasn't hard in the following weeks to pitch their acquisition to other curators on the acquisitions committee. And we did, of course, acquire them. But I didn't fully realize until years later that that body of work was kind of a watershed event in the depiction of native Alaskans by Alaskan artists. In that portfolio, as in the decades of his work since, including two major books and countless exhibitions, no Alaska artist I know has more successfully shared with us the character of a place and of its people than Jim Barker. I would travel to Bethel a couple of times in the next few years following that visit. I didn't stay with Robin and Jim, but with a Moravian minister in the community and his wife, who was then the director of the Hiktarvik Regional Museum there. But I did visit Jim and Robin, got to take a steam bath with Jim and other men in the community. And I felt lucky being there in person to be able to see that community in part through Jim's eyes. By the time Jim and Robin moved to Fairbanks in 1987, he was firmly established as Alaska's foremost ethno ethnographic photographer. He taught photography at the university, he and Robin worked together to produce the landmark book, Always Getting Ready, and they both became prominent, much beloved figures in the cultural life of our community. Jim did all kinds of photo photographic work, 
all of it outstanding. I always tell people only half in jest that I helped put their son Eric through college, paying for Jim to make perfect, immaculate slides of my paintings for so many years. But it is in his photographs of people that Jim's work is unparalleled. He had made similarly insightful photographs of migrant workers in Washington state, residents of redevelopment areas in San Francisco, and the historic 1965 Sel Selma to Montgomery Civil Rights March before he ever came to Alaska. We are so lucky that while still a young man, he visited Alaska more than half a century ago, moved here just four years later, and turned his eye and camera on this place and its people. Thank you, Jim and Robin, for all you've given to us. It's an honor to be here today to introduce and to celebrate this recognition that you so richly deserve. We'll need to unmute. There we go. Oh, not quite. There we go. Are we on mute? Oh. We are, you're on, James. Okay, there's a, something in the middle of the screen here that I'm not that's blocking view of myself. <clears throat> well, Kess, thank you. Um, this has been a considerable surprise to me, to us generally. I've been a, kind of a quiet worker, carefully studying the accuracy and effects of the photographs that I take and the books that I've made. Here, I'm not used to having the Clegg lights on me. I'm used to turning the lights on others. I'd like to first thank the board of Rasmussen Foundation for supporting the arts in Alaska. Thank you to CEO Diane Kaplan, um, uh, the selection committee and those who nominated me. And thank you to Jeff Baird, Lisa Demert and her team who have put this event and the website together. And thanks to my family, especially my wife, Robin, who encouraged me these five decades provided my most intensive critique function as my wordsmith and in the Bethel area rode behind me on the ski do with my equipment on her back. And oh, there were some close calls on thin ice. I was first employed by the Division of Industrial Research at Washington State University, Pullman, documenting engineers, highly technical subjects and shooting films in this capacity, I became more comfortable at photographing people. In March 1965, faculty and associates at WSU asked that I fly down with two other people to participate and photograph the Selma March. It was inspiring, documenting the emotional expressions along the miles that we walked. By then, clearly, I was committed to documenting people and events so close uh, events, so I chose to study anthropology at uh, San Francisco State. This study resulted in my photographing people with a wider eye to include the environment around my subjects, and I kept journals about my experience as I do this today. In 1968, I was introduced to a family with nine children, the gardeners, so I moved to Marin County and spent two years documenting their life on any given day, I might find the kids jumping on the beds, dressing up or making art. I think some of those kids might be indeed watching here today. After a short visit in 1973, doing a booklet for the Yukon Cusquam Health Corporation, I moved to Bethel permanently in 1974 and met my wife the following year. For 12 years, Robin and I traveled extensively around the 50 some villages in the YK Delta. I was invited to travel with hunters and photograph seal hunting, fishing, egg gathering, and much more. Robin worked with the village Head Start programs. Our son, Eric, was born in Bethel in 1981. I became interested in the visual history of the region, so I started copying collections of old photographs, which later were, were included in the book, Bethel, the First 100 Years. My interest in early photographs resulted in my being, able, being asked to visit and collect uh, 
in such villages as Damble, Savunga, Napaskiak. In no attack, I visited an elderly woman and asked her whether she had lived her whole life there. She initially said yes, but then added, well, in the early 30s, my husband and I and a couple others were asked to run a herd of reindeer from here to Canada, and it took five years. We were flown back to Noatak in two hours, she said, and I had never been in an airplane, and I was just terrified. It takes a while to be comfortable raising a camera and partially blocking my face, but I've long been at ease doing this when photographing people. If I'm comfortable, my subjects seem comfortable. I watch for moments when a subject, subject is expressive and intent when they are most revealing. Sometimes this takes time, other times it happens quickly. It's a wondrous feeling to catch such a very uh, a live moment, and that's what I'm always looking for. Wherever I go, wherever I shoot, my primary concern is watching people for insightful visual moments. Oh, but when I'm in the dark room developing film and making prints, the room is shuddering with the sounds of good jazz. And if you drop by wherever you do, don't touch the door. You might let the dark out. Thank you so much, James. We're really thrilled to have you among the 19 distinguished artists of Alaska. I can't think of a better person to be our first winner who's a photographer. And uh, you, you really make us all proud. And Robin, thank you as well for being such a support and part of it. Now I wanna turn it back over to Jeff and we'll field some questions. Yes, friends. So now is your opportunity to uh, to talk to James, ask James questions, or just make uh, statements about his work that you'd like to share with with people. So please use your uh, raise hand function at the bottom of the screen, and we can call on you. And also, the chat function as well. We'll be reading some comments. Okay, just reading Liz Gardner's comments. Uh, Jim's work with myself and our family informed me as a person, informed what family could be and what we could become and did. I was never a subject. I was a purpose of importance. Here. Pat Race, I see your hands raised, go ahead. Yeah, hi, I just wanted to say thanks. It was such a wonderful opportunity to come up and spend time with you and your family uh, and, and see all so many of your beautiful photographs. Um, the, the voiceover, I just wanted to make a note that voiceover for um, the quote by Mary Pete from your introduction of your book um, was read by Representative Tiffany Zulkowski from the Bethel area. And when I went to her office, she had a copy of your book on her shelf. So it was very, very nice. So thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of telling your story. Well, thank you. Yes. Thanks, Pat. Liz Gardner. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Jim. Hi, Hi Liz. Robin. Oh, I'm so honored that you guys got in touch with us and I'm representing the 11 Gardner family members. Um, I just, you know, <laughs> briefly, I just wanted to say that his book or, and, and Robin worked on that with you, right? I mean, that was a kind of a joint effort. I, I understand, right? Is that true, Jim? Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, I was working on a political campaign in, in um, Cleveland, Ohio in 2004, and I was in shipping and receiving, and um, the, the political 
person I was working for was, you know, he was kind of an internet or national um, celebrity. And through shipping and receiving, I, I see Jim's book, um, the always getting ready. And I, I was aware that it had been published and we had a copy in our, in our family library, but I was all of a sudden struck like, Oh, you know, like, OMG, you know, Jim's part of this political campaign. He, he, you know, supported this guy, whatever. And I ended up calling him, I think within a couple of days and, and, and asking him, he's like, I have no idea how that book ended up as a gift for this um, presidential candidate. And I, do you, I can say who it was. Do you, do you mind? It was Dennis Kucinich. And um, I had, and anyway, it was just this huge compliment because that book obviously was a piece of pride for the state of Alaska that they felt like sending that book to this really progressive candidate um, was was kind of a gift. This is this is who we represent up here, and we want you to know. And it was Jen's photos. It was really cool. Well, thank you, thank you. I I could go on about our family. That might be another another point of of coming back and saying something. But I just really wanted to. That was just an incredible compliment to you. I thought, Jim, you and Robin. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. It's good to hear you, Liz. <laughs> I'm just reading a quick comment from Peggy Shoe Shoemaker, who's also a distinguished artist from Fairbanks. Jim and Robin, this award makes me so glad for you, for Alaska, for all art and artists. Uh, Charles, your hand is up. Charles Mason. Oh, now can you hear me? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I just want to say, how you doing, Jim? Congratulations. <laughs> I'm doing fine here. You gotta be doing really I feel fine. a little bit nailed to my chair here, but yeah. <laughs> uh, you should be doing really fine. You know, and well deserved after a few years of nominating you and other people have been for years. You're you're the guy. So congratulations. I I first met Jim because I saw a popular modern photography magazine that had one of those articles. It's about 1985 that had my 10 favorite photographs in the world. And one time I was flipping through it, I forget who the guy was, it's a friend of yours, um, had rounded up these photos. And it was a picture of a kid playing stickball in Queefbuck. And I'm thinking, wow, who is this guy, Jim Barker? I, I was living in Fairbanks, I'd just been here about a year or two. Who is this guy, Jim Barker? I gotta meet him someday. And we used Steve Cooper's Bush inaugural ball as a reason to go to Bethel, Sherry Simpson and I, uh, we use that as a to do a story for the news monitor, but my real reason to go was to meet Jim Barker, which I did and got to spend time in your house and see your waterless dark room and hang out with you and Robin and Eric and become a good friend over many years now. You've been a friend and a mentor and a, a fellow photographer and an inspiration to me and I value all that and it's just terrific seeing you win this today, Jim. Well, thank you. Thank you. You bet. Thanks, Charles. Um, Earl, a check. Earl, you're you're on mute. It's frozen. Okay. Yeah. Um, we'll come back to Earl in a second. Uh, we can't hear you right now if you're if you're talking, Earl. We're going to go to uh, Chris Barker. God, everybody's on mute. <laughs> Hi. Hey, Jim. Hey, Jim. Hi. Hi. So, this is your family. This is the whole Seattle Barker group together. I was going to say it sounds like a herd there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> We're all, we're all here and uh, we are incredibly proud of you and uh, congratulations 10 I times over so. and so pleased and yeah so pleased we're all and, Jim, and Jim I'm so sorry that neither one of your brothers or your parents could be around yeah. but I I talk I talk to Tom every day so I'll tell him about all this <laughs> oh good yes yes you know I I keep I keep him informed about everything so Congratulations. Robin here. I want to say happy oh, birthday. Hi, Robin. Hi, Robin. Hi, Robin. <laughs> uh, 
We'll talk to you on Zoom next week. Hi. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Chris and company. Um, Earl, I'm giving you another shout out here. If you can unmute yourself, your hand is raised. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Congratulations, Jim. Congratulations. Hey, Earl. Yeah, good. To, always good to see you there, Jim. Um, in 2007 and 2017, I applied for the Rasmussen Foundation Awards, individual awards. And uh, for the past 25 years or so, Jim has been photographing my, my masks and my dolls and my crazy work. Um, and then I used those images to apply for the Rasmussen Foundation Awards. And I, I tried once and I got that award in 2007 that individual award. And then in 2017, I did it again. And I got the fellowship that year and I was using the images that Jim Barker took pictures of uh, when, when um, uh, Yolanda Feyas used to be in Fairbanks years ago. And Yolanda would call Jim and say, hey, I got new work from Earl. Uh, can you take pictures of these? And uh, so in my bedroom in there, I got hundreds and hundreds of images that that Jim took. So what I was kind of thinking was, Jim, you know, one of these days, I want to write a book and I want to use those images that you um, that you took. And uh, and but but uh, before all this, I want to go see you and Robin and your family in uh, in Fairbanks sometimes. But thank you, Jim, and thank you, Rasmussen Foundation. Thank you, Diane. And thank you to the uh, rest of the people uh, that are, uh, this is the, you know, for arts, this time of the year is the most exciting time of the year for artists. Yes. Congratulations, Jim. Well, thank you, Earl. It, it was there were many good memories that we, uh, that, uh, we had together. Thank you, Earl, for your comments. Um, Sherry Summer. Charity, you're on mute. <laughs> well, we can't hear you up yet. Well, maybe while we're waiting for Charity to unmute herself, I'll mention, I think I once saw one of your applications, Earl, where you had a selfie with your art. That was a unique thing that our panelists got to see. And that's quite a step up moving to uh, have Jim Barker as you're photographing your work. <laughs> By the way, everyone, Earl, Earl is not only one of the most talented artists uh, with, with um, uh, visual arts, he is also a talented artist of the culinary arts, having had a lesson myself in sushi making, Chivac style. So welcome. Okay. Charity, are you on? She just messaged that her audio wasn't working, but she did say in, in uh, her comment, thank you for your treasured work, James, for uh, another beautiful film, Pat, and to Rasmussen Foundation board and staff. Of course, Charity was a partner in crime and uh, with us at the Rasmussen Foundation, a program officer for many years, and she managed the uh, Individual Artist Award program. And, the Distinguished Artist Award process for many years. Good to see you again, Sherry. Hmm. Um, Phyllis, I know you had your hand up earlier, and um, Phyllis Morrow, if you want to, not to put you on the spot. Hmm. And you're on mute if you. There we go. Is our audio on? Can you hear us? Yes, we can hear you. Chase and I are here. And Chase, I was, go ahead, Chase. I was just thinking about all, I mean, one of the, um, it's almost like in some ways, uh, Jim's photographs are just in a sort of, like an additional side effect of his personality so that, you know, when he goes out to photograph, he leaves villages full of friends, all these families that, you know, want to know how he's doing and what's, you know, what's happening with, 
Jim and Robin so that, um, you know, he's just that bond that he creates is really amazing. Yeah, I think, you know, Jim, you, you talked about um, being unobtrusive, but one, one of the things about being on the other side of your camera is that we all get to see the, the concentration and joy and um, intensity of your presence. Um, it's not intrusive, but it is part of part of the uh, part of the beauty of your talent. So, yeah, you, this is such a well-deserved award. We're really excited. We're really for excited you. for you. Thank you, Russ <laughs> Foundation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Phyllis and Chase. We had a question about whether this video would be posted uh, anywhere, and, and yes, there's a page on the Rasmussen Foundation website of. Um, all the distinguished artists, and most of those have uh, videos. And of course, this will, uh, James will be a welcome addition to that page soon. Um, while we wait for other questions and comments, I have to uh, one short anecdote. When we um, select the distinguished artists, Diane, I, and a handful of other staff have an opportunity, get the privilege of calling the recipient and informing them of the news. And so we all gather around Diane's desk and we're gonna call James. We pick up the phone, we call him, voicemail. Oh, that's kind of deflating. We wait 10 minutes, try it again, another voicemail again. So we thought, okay, we're gonna try one more time. We call, we get, get him, but unfortunately he's in the lower 48 traveling. And so we're trying to have a communication uh, and telling him that he's won this Distinguished Artist Award and this um, the process and there's a, a financial award part of it as well and uh, there was a bunch of background noise in, in the back we couldn't hear each other so we had a very very confused uh, conversation for the first time but the message was eventually uh, delivered ah, yes <laughs> yeah um, if I remember correctly, we were having our kind of an afternoon uh, lunch with a few friends and, and such, family. and families and, and such, and uh, 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 and even though I know, kn knew that I had to be careful about who I had mentioned that this to, uh, uh, but I went ahead and told the whole crowd, but I knew that uh, North Carolinas uh, don't really talk much about things, so I knew that that uh, <laughs> that, that you know it wouldn't be spilled. They don't talk about Alaska. They don't talk about Alaska. <laughs> That's right. Right. Um, Lisa Deemer, I saw you had your hand up. Yes, I just wanted to share. It's been mentioned a couple times, and I thought, oh, I've got it on my shelf. Um, so here's the Bethel book. Yes. And the first 100 years. I used this all the time in my time in Bethel. Great resource. Um, and I don't know if this is reversed. It isn't what I'm looking at. But at any rate, it's Jim's pictures here. Another another resource of his photos. Um, also, I want to say, Robin, do you want to scoot into the frame there with James for a minute? and? Have a moment too. Here I am. Yay. Hi. Did you want to say something, Robin? Oh, I'm just, uh, you know, when, when Jim told me about this, I was absolutely gobsmacked, but I also knew that he deserved it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, we're lifelong Parker's partners. I think we've been together for 47 years or so. And uh, all that time, uh, Jim has been photographing. And I guess one anecdote would be that um, when my son was born, when my son was being born, uh, Jim was there. And but I also had a midwife and I was pretty concentrating pretty hard on yeah. what I was doing. And this but, was in the Bethel Hospital. In the Bethel Hospital. And but then I started hearing this click sound <laughs> and I knew he was there and I knew he was engaged and, and it was very comforting. Um, and there are some rather intimate, but very nice photographs. Well, thank you. I, I know we're coming up to the end of the hour. I wanna provide uh, another call out for, oh, Liz raised, would you like 
Go ahead, Liz. Yeah, is it okay that I speak again? Yeah, I was the, the first thing was kind of anecdotal, but I wanted to recognize um, the commitment that Robin and, and um, Jim have have had in in Alaska. But um, you know, I as if as a member of this family, and it was such a long time ago, and it just seems such early work. Although the Selma stuff is so important that you were there, Jim, that you got to uh be in the south and walk the walk and um you know talk the talk and just action um you know lights and action i guess but those photographs i learned about later but when you were photographing our family you know it just never felt like somebody just mentioned intrusive it was more like you were inserted into our family not like a brother maybe an uncle or something but you were so involved and it just um, informed me as a human being. I went on to, to love photography, but um, I just, I don't know if that, that's part of the artist in you or the gift that you have given the world through your eye. Um, yet, I just want to tell you how important that time for us was and that how deeply it May it, it informed of us as individuals and as participants in our world that that time really, I, I don't know, it's like an anthropological wonder, right? It was kind of worked, you know, it's you worked at the magic, I think, um, just in human, um, in the human element of thrive and evolve and all those words you could you know i just feel like words aren't even enough to describe it so um i hope i make sense um you did publish a bunch of the photographs which have had importance you know in the family of children and you got awards early on for that work um and i think it was it was a good part of your resume that you were able to move to other very important areas of your career and your imagination and art. So I just like to honor you in that way. Well, thanks. Thanks, Liz. Um, and I should I'll just for other people to, to know here, I had moved out to Marin County. And um, uh, when I had met your family and, uh, um, and spent two years there, um, concentrating on, on on photographing your family um, and it was a, a, a very important time and uh, for for the work and in getting to know uh, all of you thank you liz thank you james i see tom you have your hand raised and you're on mute <laughs> Thank you. Well, congratulations, James. Uh, it, this is really wonderful. Uh, uh, it turns out that that Eric and uh, is married to my or Jane and I married to our daughter. And uh, but before before we uh, um, before they were married before that, I don't know if they even knew each yes, other. Did. did they know each other then? Yes. Anyway, I went, we went to a, a talk of yours at the University of. Uh, of the North uh, Museum of the North, and we remember that very well because we heard, oh, James Barker is going to give a talk on uh, the Selma March, and we went to that, and we were just, we thought it was just a wonderful presentation at that time, and uh, I think that was the first time I had uh, heard you speak about anything at that point, but that was a few years ago. But Jane had something to say too. So I'm Margaret's mother, um, Eric. It's Eric's mother-in-law, and. I wanted to say that uh, Margaret and Eric met when they were in the flot production of Gondoliers, the Gilbert and Sullivan musical. And at the, I didn't know that Eric Barker was Jim Barker's son. And we had some books of, of Jim's. And, you know, I was really impressed and, you know, knew how great he was. And then it was only at the end of the production when we, some of us went out to Denny's that um, it came out somehow that Eric was 
Jim Barker, the photographer's son. And I just said, oh, I couldn't believe it. And who would know that uh, I, I said, well, I've got to get him to sign my book. And then who would know? We didn't know then that they would get married later. And they've been married for a while and they're living here in Fairbanks. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. We're, we're, we're very happy to be family. <laughs> yes, we are, we too. are too, of course. <laughs> Love you all. Yeah. Hey, well, thank you everyone for sharing. Uh, I, we are at the top of the hour here, and I'm going to turn the floor back over to Diane Kaplan to close us out. Thank you everyone for joining us today. And please join me one more time in congratulating our 2022 Distinguished Artist of Alaska. James Barker. <laughs> Clapping from the other, other have room. A have a glorious rest of the day, everyone. We love you all. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. <laughs>